With the techniques that I'm going to share with you in today's video, I'm sure that you can paint whichever animal you want in watercolor and make it look as realistic as this one. So let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to another new video and today I'm going to be using this Fabriano Aquarello watercolor paper and this is of 300 GSM and it is 25% cotton paper and it is actually cold pressed paper. So it will have quite of a texture to it which I really like and it comes in kind of like a pad and it is not glued on the all four sides, it is only glued at the top as you can see. Since it is not glued on all four sides, the paper is not going to be stable if I paint it just as it is. So I will have to take out one single paper and I will show you in just a minute of how I do that. I am using a craft knife like this and I am going to run it along the glued side and I am going to separate the first paper. And from time to time I am making sure that I am only cutting the glued part and I am not damaging any paper at all because that is really important. So if you are going to do that, just be careful with it. You don't want to damage the paper. I am going to tape it down with masking tape on all four sides so that it doesn't move and also it helps with the buckling. As always, I am going to be using two jars of water, one for dirty water and one for clean water and I am using my watercolor brushes and I will leave all the materials in the description box so go check that out. And as for the paints, I am using this Mungio watercolors and I have a review for it and I will link it in the description box and I use a tissue paper and a spray bottle to activate the paint and in addition, I am going to be using just a scrap paper, this is also watercolor paper and this is just to test out the colors that we mix. And that's all for the materials and now let's move on to the painting. For my sketch, I'm going to be using this Stettler mechanical pencil and the lead is actually water soluble and I think it is pretty cool. And as for the sketching process, I'm not showing you my entire sketching process because that is not the today's topic. So if you want any kind of tips and tricks on how to draw a freehand sketch, then let me know in the description box down below and I'll be happy to do one. To lighten my sketch further, I'm using an E-double eraser so that I'll be left with a very light sketch. I've pre-mixed my colors and now I'm going to start with the background. And for the background, we are going to use wet on wet technique and I'm going to wet the paper first with water. And then when I add those paints, it is going to blend together so easily and I'm going to have a smooth transition between colors. And also I'm going to have a blurred effect, which is exactly what I want. And the major trick here is that I'm also wetting the tail of the squirrel because the tail was quite fluffy. And in order to achieve that effect, I have to use wet on wet technique. Before I move on and add my paints, I am actually testing it out in a scrap piece of paper so that I can be sure that this is exactly the color that I want. And if you are a beginner, then you should do this too so that you can be happy with the color mixing process. And now that I am happy, I am adding the colors onto the paper. And since the paper is wet, the paint is actually moving through the paper and we don't have any harsh edges and it's going to be easy for me to blend it as well. If by any chance you add paint to unnecessary area, then just take a tissue paper and soak up the paint from that particular area and it's going to lift off all the paint from that area. And this technique is actually called lifting technique and it's going to be really helpful for you in whichever painting that you do. If you are going to recreate this exact squirrel painting, then I'll leave a link to the reference image in the description box below so that you can easily follow along with this video. While the paper is still wet, I'm going to add my darker colors as well and because it's going to bleed out and blend together easily. Since I'm done with the left side, I'm going to move on to the right side and I'm going to repeat the steps exactly as it is. I'm going to wet the paper first and then add my paints so that they can bleed out and blend together easily. The major thing that you need to understand about watercolors is that they are going to look much more intense and saturated while they are wet. 
but as it dries it is going to look much more paler and much less intense and that is the main reason we always need to work in layers and as you can see i am done with the right side and now i'm moving on to the left side and i'm adding another layer of the same set of colors to intensify them and i'll be doing the same thing again for the right side as well and this technique is called layering technique just like we did the background, I'm going to use wet on wet technique for the ground as well because I want smooth transition between colors. And with the brown paint, I'm just adding it here and there while leaving some space white because I'm going to be using green paint on those areas. And just like we did with the background, we are going to use layering technique and I'm going to add lots of layers to make the paint look as saturated as I want it to be. For the little grass area there, I'm using wet on wet technique because the paint is still wet in that area and when I add this darker paint it's going to bleed out and I'm going to have a soft transition between colors and it's not going to be too much in focus. I'm adding another layer of paint to the ground area and the main thing you need to understand about this layering technique is that you need to let the previous layer dry completely to the touch before you move on to the next layer of color. If the previous layer is wet, then it is going to be similar to wet on wet technique. Moving on to the squirrel, I'm using wet on dry technique and I'm actually drawing the eyes first. And it is kind of like a personal preference. If you like to draw the eyes first, do it. If you want to do it as the last thing, then feel free to do it. It's all up to you. It's just a matter of personal preference. I like to do it first and that's why I am painting it first. For the squirrel's body, I'm actually using wet on wet technique and that's why I'm wetting all the areas that I need. And then I'll add in the paints and when I do that, it's going to bleed out and blend together so nicely and I'm going to have smooth transition of color. I know that I've said it like a million times but I'm going to say it again. Wet on wet technique is really useful when you want to have a really nice smooth transition between colors. This is just my base layer and I am keeping it as light as I can and I'll just build up the intensity in layers because with watercolors if by any accident you add any darker paint to any area at an early stage then there is not much that you can do. So it's always better to be careful when you use darker paints and that is the main reason you need to work in layers. That's our base layer done and now I'm going to move on to my next layer and for this layer I'm going to add paints to certain areas and while the paint is still wet I'm going to blend it out with water so that I can have a smooth transition of color. This technique is called gradient technique and it basically removes all the harsh edges and the paint is going to slowly transform from a darker shade to a lighter shade. I'll be using this technique a lot in the upcoming layers. If you notice, then the color changes are really gradual and that is because I'm using light washes of color. And I do this because I want to control the saturation as much as I can. And the best way to do that is to work in layers and use light washes of color. And also, if you noticed, I'm using wet on wet technique only for those areas where I want smooth transition of color. For example, the tail and for all the other areas, mostly I'm using the gradient technique. For the tail at the top area where it is the lightest, I'm using wet on wet technique and also direct lines where I'm just using small strokes to denote the fur texture and since it is very light, I'm just using very light washes of color, it is going to look much more natural. For the face, just as I said before, I'm using the gradient technique wherein I just apply paint to certain areas and blend it out with water. If you notice, the squirrel has a lot of color changes and I am able to achieve that only by using the layering technique and also by being patient. And that's exactly what it takes to do anything realistic, even with watercolors. You need to be patient and you need to work in layers. If by any chance the paint bleeds into some other area, take for example the back of the squirrel, the dark paint just bled into the back where I don't want that to be. I'm just using a damp brush and I am trying to lift off as much paint as I can from those areas which I don't want. And then I'm going to use a tissue paper and lift it off even further. And that's exactly how you fix your mistakes.
Moving on to the tail area, I'm starting to add the details and as for the details, I'm just adding lots of long strokes of fur with a little bit more darker paint so that it looks three dimensional. Now that I'm happy with the layers, I'm going to move on with the details and for the details, I'm using a smaller brush and I'm going to paint in small strokes to denote the fur texture. And even for the details, you need to work in layers and that's why I'm using a fairly diluted paint because I'm going to do another layer of details and I'm going to saturate the paint even more for the next layer so that it is going to look much more realistic and much more natural. The details on the top of its head is actually quite dark and I don't want it that dark. So I'm going to wet my brush and with a wet brush I'm going to blend that out so that I have a subtle detail. Now that I'm done with the details, I think I want to change the hue of the squirrel. It looks more brown to me and I want it to look more red. And to do that, I'm using very diluted amount of mixed paint of the hue that I want. I'm going to go all over the squirrel so that it's going to change the hue of it. And in a few minutes, you're going to see the difference that it makes. This technique is called glazing technique and it's really helpful when you want to change the hue of the subject that you're painting. For my highlights, I'm going to use white paint, but at the same time, I'm not using highly diluted white paint. I'm just using a fairly diluted white paint because I want the highlights to be visible, but at the same time, I want it to be subtle. Now that we are almost done with the squirrel, I think the background looks kind of pale and I want to saturate it even more. And to do that, I'm adding another layer of paint. And when it comes to the tail area, I'm using an interesting technique called the negative painting technique, wherein we don't paint the object itself, but we paint around the object to define the shape of the object. I hope you understand. What I'm basically doing is that I'm not painting the fur itself, but I'm painting around the fur to give it shape and also to make it look distinct and prominent from the background. What I basically do is that I add paint around the tail area and with a smaller brush I'm going to drag that paint towards the tail in small strokes so that it is going to look defined and prominent. I'm using the same technique for the grass in the lower area as well. For some highlights on the ground area, I'm mixing a little bit of white to my green so that it becomes slightly opaque and I'm just adding in small random strokes. And to be honest, it's not going to be that visible at all. It's only going to be a subtle highlight, but at the same time, it is going to make a little bit of difference. For the whiskers, I'm using a fairly thick consistency of white paint and I'm going to draw in random strokes. And that is the main key here because if you just paint everything in an orderly fashion then it's not going to look realistic at all. You have to paint everything randomly, including the fur. And now for some brighter white highlights, I'm using a white gel pen and as I said before, I'm just drawing the whiskers in a very random manner and that is what's going to make the painting look realistic. Just as I did the whiskers, I'm using the same white gel pen and I'm adding a little bit of highlight to the body of the squirrel as well. But I'm not adding it everywhere, I'm just adding it to a few areas so that it looks subtle and also I'm just adding it in a very random manner so that it looks realistic. At this point, I think it's quite bright so I'm going to go over it with a wet brush. And what it basically does is that it is going to blend that white gel pen a little bit and it's not going to look as bright as it is before. Just a few finishing touches here and there and we're done. The painting is finished. I hope you enjoyed watching today's video and you found it useful because I tried my best to break down my process of painting a realistic looking animal with watercolor. And I hope you liked this video. So if you did, then do give this video a big thumbs up so that it can reach a lot more people. And also, let me know what you think in the comment section down below because I'm always eager to read your comments. So until next time, bye everybody.